Daddy Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold, the homemaker, has a problem in his own home. His young cousin Raymond has been living with him for several months now, and he is still out of a job. In fact, he has never been in a job. You said it. And so this morning, Judge Hardy, that is, Honest Harold, has decided to have a man-to-man talk with the boy. Raymond, I think it's about time we had a little chat. All right, Cousin Harold. And would you please put down that saxophone? Oh, sure. Uh, Thank you very much. Now about your future, my boy. Now, here you are, 22 years old, and you still don't have a profession. Well, I played the saxophone... That's not a profession, that's a misfortune. (laughs) I'm talking about a regular job. I made $10 playing at the Elks Christmas dance, and I'm going to play there again next Christmas. (laughs) Raymond, working once a year isn't much of a job. Well, it's steady. uh (laughs) Now look, my boy, there's another reason why you should be thinking of a career. You know you have a girl now. You and little Gloria are sort of going steady. Yeah. (laughs) And someday, maybe you'll want to settle down and get married. Yeah. (laughs) And Raymond, you can't support a wife just playing at the Elks Dance every Christmas. Maybe they'll have a dance on Thanksgiving. (laughs) Raymond, I'm trying to be serious. Now you listen to me. Now, after you and Gloria get married, you're going to want to settle down. Build a little home. And then you'll have children. One, two, three. I'll see you later, Cousin Harold. Raymond, where are you going? I'm going to get a job. If Gloria can have all those children, by golly, I'm going to support them. (laughs) Well, Raymond's a father. Good morning, Station KHJP. I'll connect you. Oh, good morning, Glory. Oh, good morning, Harold. <laughs> I was just talking to a friend of yours, Raymond. Raymond? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were just having a serious talk about marriage. Marriage? <laughs> <laughs> what a couple they're going to make, Laughing Boy and Minnie Ha. <laughs> How is Raymond? Raymond? Oh, fit as a cello. <laughs> You know, Gloria, I think I've convinced him he should go out and get a steady job. Oh, thank you. I think you're awfully sweet, Harold. Well. And I know somebody else who thinks you're sweet. Oh, who's that? My mother. Oop. Oh, she was saying, (laughs) just this morning, wouldn't it be wonderful if I had a father like you? Uh, father like me? (laughs) (laughs) Gloria, your mother is a fine woman. And she's coming down here to the station this morning. Uh, she is? Yes, she's going to bring me my lunch. Oh. But Harold, Mm. I think she's really coming down to see you. (laughs) I'm sorry, Gloria, but I can't see her. I'm going to be very dizzy. I mean busy. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the train from Charlieville must be pulling in. <laughs> My mother. Oh, Zeef. Oh, hello, Mr. Hill. Uh, hello, Mrs. O'Day. See you around the 1st of May. <laughs> <laughs> Hemp, you're always joking. Yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> and here's your lunch, Gloria. Oh, thank you, Mother. And uh, I brought a cookie for you, Mr. Hemp. Uh, a macaroon. A macaroon. <laughs> sweet to the sweet, you know. <laughs> macaroon. Well, guess I'd better be going. And uh, Mr. Hemp, I had the cutest dream last night. Dream? Yes. About hunting. I was the hunter, uh, and you were the helpless antelope. Ha. Huh? You were standing there by a water hole Your nose to the wind I crept up on you Closer, closer Mm -hmm. I raised my gun Bang! 
<laughs> but I missed you. Oh. <laughs> but the next shot, I got you. Oop. Then, then I took you home in my car, draped over the fender. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hamp, where are you going? I'm going to find another water hole. <laughs> oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. <laughs> I've got some wonderful news. Oh, uh, what's that? Cousin Raymond's found a job. Well, that is wonderful. What kind of a job is it, Mother? He's selling warble ware. Warble what? It's uh, pots and pans. Oh? And then he's selling a pressure cooker, too. Oh, I see. I guess that makes Raymond a high-pressure salesman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yes. <laughs> and I suppose he'll talk to his customers... Pan to pan. <laughs> oh, mother. I've got Raymond's demonstration set out in the kitchen. Why don't you come out and see it? Yeah, all right. I will, Mother. Mm -hmm. Now, there's the pressure cooker on the stove. Uh. Say, but it has such an odd name, Mother. Why do they call it warbleware? Well, while it cooks, it whistles a tune. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Their slogan is... When your warbleware cooker bursts into song, you know that dinner won't be long. Yeah. <laughs> Who wrote that? Henry Wadsworth warbleware? <laughs> Oop. What's that? The pressure cooker's about to burst into song. What? Listen. Oh, no! <laughs> Ah, sweet mystery of life. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Sounds like Jeanette McDonald in a high wind. <laughs> oh, there's Raymond. Hi, Cousin Harold. Raymond, my boy, congratulations on your new job. Oh, thanks. Yeah. But what are you going to do with that saxophone? I thought I'd play a duet with the pressure cooker. Yeah. <laughs> Raymond, never mind your music now. You should be out selling this kitchenware. I can't until I find somebody to give a warbleware party. A warbleware what? Yeah, you have to get somebody to invite guests to their home for dinner. Then I cook the dinner on Warbleware to demonstrate it. Well, why aren't you out looking for prospects? Well, I don't know anybody who'd give a dinner for six people. Oh, well, it shouldn't be hard to find somebody, Raymond. Why, I bet I could dig up a prospect in no time. Gee, thanks, Cousin Harold. What? It's sure nice of you to find somebody for me. But you're a swell guy. But... <laughs> oh, well, what the heck. Might as well help you get started, my boy. Oop. There goes the Warbleware. Huh? Listen to this, Cousin Harold. I'll take the obligato. Oh? <laughs> oh, brother. What an orchestra. Cousin Raymond is warbleware steamy six. <laughs> A pressure cooker singing Our ah, Sweet Mystery of Life. What'll they think of next? I'm glad I didn't play the Tennessee Waltz. <laughs> well, I'll line up Doc or Pete for Raymond, and then I'll Oh, get... Harold! Oh, hello, Theodora. How's my little cupcake today? Cupcake, isn't that sweet? This morning I was a macaroon. <laughs> Theodora? Yes? How would you like to give a dinner some night? Oh, you mean a cozy little dinner for just you and me? Well, you and me and Warbleware. Warbleware? Yeah. Is that a girl? You know I'm very jealous. Oh, no, no. He's sort of a cowboy singer. <laughs> he warbles on the range. <laughs> well, what are you talking about? I don't know. Theodora? Yes? I want to ask you a question. Have you ever thought about buying a set of kitchen utensils? Might come in handy one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Harold? What? What a cute way to propose. Huh? <laughs> but this is so sudden. You'll have to give me time to think it over. Time? Oh, sure. Take all the time you want. See you in the spring. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in a marrying mood. 
today. Come to think of it, I wouldn't mind marrying Theodora, though. Uh -huh. but there's no use rushing things. I think I'll drop in and see Pete the Marshal. That I can talk him into giving a dinner. He loves to eat. Hello, Pete, old friend. You look like a gourmet. How's that, boy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, never mind, Pete. Have you made any plans for dinner tonight? Why, no, I ain't, Harold. You know, there's nothing like having your friends over for a home-cooked meal. Well, Harold, that's real sweet of you. What? Asking me to your house for dinner. Now, wait a minute, Pete. You don't understand. I'm not asking you to dinner. Oh, then your mother is. What? Oh, Harold, she's a wonderful woman. She's true blue and a yard wide. Watch it, Pete. Uh, tell her not to fix anything fancy, boy. I'll just take pot luck. Uh, Pete, will you listen to me a minute? I'm talking about a dinner for warble wear. Oh, is he going to be there, too? <laughs> Sounds like you'll have quite a crowd. No, Pete Warbleware is a singing pressure cooker. Oh, sure. <laughs> I saw him on television. Uh. <laughs> I've got this thing all mixed up. Warbleware is a trade name. Well, if I had a name like that, I'd trade it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Warbleware ain't that a doozy. Uh. <laughs> Pete, will you let me explain? Oh, Shaw sure, Harold, I just remembered. I can't come to your dinner tonight. This is my night to play pinochle with the prisoners. But, yeah, but thanks for the invite, boy. And give my best to Mr. Warbleware. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell him. Goodbye. What a character. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have better luck with old Doc Yak Yak. Hope the old horse doctor is in. Come in. Oh, hello, Harry. Hello, Doc. Yeah, I'll be right with you. I'm just giving a cold pill to my French poodle, Pierre. Yeah. French poodle, Pierre. Are you ready, Pierre? Wait, <laughs> wait. Oh, goodness. Open voo your mouth, silver play. Here it comes. <laughs> You feel better? Wait, wait! <laughs> All right, Pierre, run along now and listen to your Maurice Chevalier record. <laughs> oh, we just love Chevalier here. Yes. I hate to break up this musical appreciation hour, Doc, but Cousin Raymond's got a job selling cooking utensils, and I'm trying to help him get started. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody who'll give a dinner party for six so Raymond can demonstrate the utensils and sell some to the guests. Oh, well, Harold, you don't have to look any further. I'd be glad to give a dinner party. You would? Oh, that's wonderful. Well, when a fella needs a friend, all he has to do is call on good old Doc. Yes, yeah, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Doc Yancey's always there with a helping hand. Yes, Doc, you're swell. Yes, sir. When the night is dark and you're looking for a lighthouse. All right, Doc. <laughs> now, who are you going to invite to the dinner? Why, my animals. Your what? Just tell Raymond not to cook anything fancy. For the kittens, just some wilted catnip salad. Doc? And for my horse, Silver Moon, a box of Wheaties. Yes. Yeah, just sprinkle a little alfalfa over it. Doc, will you cut... And you don't have to cook a thing for Arthur, my goat. He'll just eat the kitchenware. <laughs> You've got the brains of an Airedale. Why, thank you, Harold. Oh, what's the... Use? was a big help. Well, I guess I'm a big help to Raymond, too. I certainly didn't... Cousin Harold? Cousin Harold? Oh, uh, hello, Raymond. Raymond, I'm afraid I didn't... Oh, Harold, I got some wonderful news. I've got somebody to give a warble wear dinner for me tonight. Well, that's fine, my boy. Congratulations. There's just one thing wrong. What's that? Well, I'm supposed to cook the meal for the guests, and I can't cook. Oh, well, don't let that bother you, Cousin Raymond. I'm a good cook. Since this first job means so much to you, my boy, I'll go along and help you tonight. You will? Is that a promise? Sure. Oh, thanks, Harold. All right, my boy. By the way, uh, who's giving the dinner party? Gloria's mother, Mrs. O'Day. Huh? <laughs> Raymond, I can't go there tonight. She thinks it's open season on antelopes. <laughs> well, Harold, you promise. I know I promise. If but... you don't help me, I'll lose my job on the first day. All right, Raymond, I'll be an antelope. Oh, thanks a lot. What'll we have for dinner? I don't know. I hope it isn't venison. <laughs> we will return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. 
CBS wishes to remind you that the Joe Lewis, Freddie Bashore fight in Detroit will be heard exclusively on this network later this evening. Russ Hodges will be at the ringside to bring you the story of the Brown Bombers' second step along the comeback trail. On CBS's Bing Crosby show this evening, Fred Astaire will be the special guest, a promised highlight being a special Astaire-Crosby version of The Thing. Oop. The Bing Crosby show and the Joe lewis Freddie Bashore battle will be heard on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, it's the night of the big warbleware dinner party at the home of Gloria's mother, Mrs. O'Day. This is one dinner Harold would like to miss, but he has promised Cousin Raymond that he'll go along and cook the meal. It's late afternoon now, and we find our reluctant chef driving to Mrs. O'Day's with Raymond. Gee, Cousin Harold, I don't know how to thank you for helping me out tonight. It's all right, my boy, but don't forget you promised to help me out. Gloria's mother is a nice woman, but I just don't want to be left alone with her in the kitchen. Now, you stay close to me. Okay. When I'm cooking the dinner, don't you go lollygagging off somewhere with Gloria. You stick with me every minute. Don't worry, I'll be right behind you. I don't want you behind me. I want you in front of me. (laughs) (laughs) Gee, I hope I sell a lot of warbleware tonight. Yeah, I hope so too, Raymond. You got your little sales talk already? Yeah, I memorized it out of the sales manual. (laughs) Yeah, let's see. Uh, Right after dinner, I get up and say... Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've all enjoyed your wobbleware dinner cooked in these fine utensils. Hold up, pot. What? Uh, but you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> then make following humorous remark to put guests in good frame of mind. Oh, that's good. Use wobbleware, and there will always be a smile on your pan. Wait for a laugh. You have to wait a long time, my boy. Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no obligation for you to buy warbleware, but... Uh, it... Never mind, Raymond. Here we are. Thank goodness. Come on, Raymond. You carry the pots and pans. All right. See, I've got the food. Vegetables, potatoes, boiling beef, horseradish, mustard. Be careful. Don't drop that pressure cooker. It might crack its voice. Now, remember, Raymond... Stick close to me. I don't want to be left alone with that old... Oh, hello, Mrs. Oh, Mr. Hemp, why, what a pleasant surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Cousin Harold's going to cook the dinner for me, Mrs. O'Day. Oh, how charming. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Hemp, you come like an ancient Egyptian bringing oriental delicacies to the queen. Oh, <laughs> Just a New England boiled dinner. <laughs> well, enter, Egyptians. What? She means us, Raymond. Come on, Sahib. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss O'Day, Raymond and I had better go right in the kitchen and get started. Well, huh? uh, follow me. The kitchen lies to the east. I should have stayed in the west. <laughs> ah, here we are. Ah, thank you. Well, lovely kitchen. <laughs> now, you probably have a lot of things to do, Mrs. O'Day. Don't let us detain you. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't a thing to do. I just stay here and buzz around. Uh, hope she doesn't come in for a landing. <laughs> <laughs> you stay close to me, Raymond. Okay. Is that you, Raymond? Hello, Gloria. I'm in the kitchen. Hi, Raymond. Hi, Gloria. It's really you. And it's really you. Yeah, and this is really me. (laughs) Now that you got that settled, shall we get started, Raymond? Oh, Raymond. Yes, Gloria. Would you like to look at the magic lantern pictures? But don't you have to look at those in a dark room? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Go on, Gloria. I'll be right back, Cousin Harold. Raymond, Raymond, come back. Oh, let them go, Mr. Hemp. After all, you were young once. I was never that young. (laughs) And besides, you don't need Raymond. Oh? I'll help you cook the dinner. Oop, trapped. (laughs) Come on now. Here, here's your little apron. Uh, But but, but, (laughs) Mrs. O'Day, I really don't need an apron. Oh, yes, yes. Come Uh, on now, we'll slip it on. uh, Uh, That's right. Now, now I'll tie it around your waist. But Mrs. O'Day... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're tickling me. 
Oh, you look so cute and ruffled. Uh, <laughs> oh, and the color brings out the brown in your eyes. <laughs> Here she goes, Raymond. <laughs> well, now, shall we start the dinner? Uh, if you'll put the pressure cooker on the stove. Yes, yeah, all right. Uh, now then, let's see. <laughs> Oh, my, you have everything prepared. Yeah, that's me. All right, now, first we'll pop in the meat. Mm -hmm. Then we'll pop in the vegetables. I'd like to pop out of here. <laughs> now, now we turn on the heat. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Hemp, mm -hmm. you and I are cooking with gas. <laughs> Raymond! Mr. Hemp. What? Do you feel anything? Huh? Oh, I'm very psychic, you know. Psychic? Yes. And right now, I'm feeling vibrations. You are? Yes. Oh, the signals are coming in very strong. Well, maybe it's a ship in distress. <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Hemp. I think, I think the vibrations are coming from you. <laughs> you know. When two people are in tune, they vibrate together. They do? Mm. <laughs> yes, Mr. Hemp, right now, you and I are vibrating on the same wavelength. Oh, brother, I'd better change my channel. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, there goes Warble Wear. Oh? <gasps> oh, listen. Uh? It's playing our song. Zoink. Oh, sweet mystery of life At the last I found thee Oops, sounds like she's coming to a boil Oh, lost I know the secret of it all Why couldn't Raymond get a job selling vacuum cleaners? <laughs> I guess the dinner is about cooked. Thank goodness Mrs. O'Day finally got out of the kitchen. Vibrations. Tss. She's probably upstairs adjusting her antenna. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly been buzzing around me. Good thing Theodora wasn't here to see us. She's a pretty jealous girl. Uh-oh. Must be the dinner guests arriving. Wonder who they are. Oh, good evening, Mrs. O'Day. Oh. Ye gods, it's Doc. Compliments of the evening, Miss O'Day. Oop, I might have known it. Pete, wonder who else she invited. It was very nice of you to ask me, Mrs. O'Day. Uh, <laughs> Theodora, she sees me out here wearing Mrs. O'Day's apron. She'll really be jealous. I'd better get out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Here comes somebody. Well, hello, hair. Oh, Pete, do you see what I see? I sure do. <laughs> Don't she look cute in that apron? <laughs> Now look, folks. Did you cook the dinner all by yourself, Hildegard? <laughs> I just noticed something, Doc. Hildegard got a mustache. <laughs> folks, quiet. I don't want Theodore to know that I'm out here. Oh, I get it, boy. Sure, we understand. What? You don't want her to catch you playing house with Mrs. O'Day. Oh, I'm not playing house. Where there's smoke, there's fire, boy. Yeah, and this, this kitchen's pretty smoky. <laughs> That's the pressure cooker. <laughs> well, I don't blame Miss O'Day for falling for you. You look mighty fetching in gingham. <laughs> Pete, will you cut that out? You, who, who's out in the kitchen? Oh, Theodora's coming in here. Guess she found out about you, Mrs. O'Day, Romeo. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in your apron, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Pete. Let's get out of here before the battle starts. Yeah, fine friends. What am I going to do? Maybe I could hide in the oven and pretend I'm a baked potato. <laughs> Why, Harold? Oh, uh, hello, Theodora. <laughs> What are you doing in Mrs. O'Day's kitchen? Now, Theodora, I can explain everything. I just came over to cook dinner for Mrs. O'Day. I mean, I'm helping Cousin Warbleware sell Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> that is Raymond sell Warbleware. Theodora, please don't be jealous. Jealous? <laughs> She's getting hysterical. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, you look so funny in that apron. Oh, I do? And you thought I was jealous? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd see you in ruffles. Oh, Harold. <laughs> she laughed at me. And I thought she'd be jealous. Maybe she doesn't like me as much as I thought. Well, I don't care. 
At least Mrs. O'Day likes me. We vibrate on the same frequency. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Day. Oh, I must talk to you about us. About us? Yes. Remember I said we were in tune with each other? Yeah. I was receiving your vibration? Yeah. Well, it was all a mistake. What? Yes. I just realized something. The vibrations weren't coming from you at all. They were coming from the pressure cooker. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you and Warbleware will be very happy. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <Boots. laughs> What a night this turned out to be. Slaving over a sink full of dirty dishes. I'll be ruining my nails. Everybody else is having a good time. Yeah, listen to them laughing. Theodora's probably still laughing at me. Oh, well. Cousin Harold. Oh, hello, Raymond. Guess what? I just sold three sets of warbleware. Well, that's wonderful, my boy. And I owe it all to you, Cousin Harold. Thanks a lot. That's all right. Glad to do it, Raymond. Why don't you come in and join the party? No, oh, thanks. I'll just stay here and finish the dishes. You run along and have a good time. Okay. Gloria's waiting for me. <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad I helped little Raymond Better get these pots and pans washed and Go home All I'm going to get out of tonight is dishpan hands Oh, sweet mystery of life At last I found you Hello, Harold uh, Good evening, Miss Theodora Are you going to stay out here in the kitchen all night? Sorry, but Hildegard has to do her dishes Will you please hand me the Brillo? Harold, please don't be angry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> That's all right. I think it's wonderful you're doing all this for Raymond. In fact, you're the most wonderful man I know. I don't... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and you really look awfully cute in your apron. I do? <laughs> I guess the ruffles are becoming. <laughs> and Harold, mm? here's something for my little teddy bear. Uh? A kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'd do anything for you. You would? Okay, you do the pots and pans. Here's the brillo. <laughs> <laughs> just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Eddie Firestone, Isabel Randolph, Jane Morgan, Mari Alden, and Parley Bear, and featured Gloria Holliday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Good night, folks. Alibi Me, the tale of a lad with murder on his hands, will be Mickey Rooney's starring vehicle on Suspense tomorrow evening. Mickey Rooney will be heard as Georgie, who slays his boyhood pal and then tries to find someone to provide an alibi. When he at last succeeds, this brilliant suspense story takes a novel twist. CBS invites you to hear Mickey Rooney and Alibi Me on Suspense tomorrow evening. Also hear The Hallmark Playhouse, a story based on the life of Theodore Roosevelt. Both Playhouse and Suspense are heard every Thursday night on most of these same CBS stations. Now stay tuned for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>